Hello everyone. In the last video, we had seen what is nutrition and why is it important. We also had a look on two different type of nutrition process. So now let's have a look on these nutrition process one by one. So the first process which we are going to see is autotrophic nutrition. Now we also know that plants synthesize their own food and this type of nutrition is called as autotrophic nutrition. The word auto means self and troph means nutrition. So when we combine them, it becomes autotrophic and the word literally means self-nutrition. So self-nutrition is the meaning of autotrophic. Now we also know that the nutrition which we are obtaining or the plants are obtaining are coming from the food. So the food sources are different for different organisms. Unlike animals, plants do not eat vegetables or flesh. So what is the raw material which plants use to make their own food? Another question which comes into your mind is why only plants are possible of making food and why not animals? We will be answering these questions in this video. In autotrophic nutrition, we know that plants uses carbon dioxide and water from the surrounding in the presence of sunlight to make their own food. Now, do you remember what this process is called? Exactly. This process is called as photosynthesis. The word simply means as photo means light and synthesis means production. So it is the synthesis of food by the green plants in the presence of sunlight. Now the materials which are taken up by the plants are converted into carbohydrates. Now these carbohydrates are the main energy providers to the plants. But all the carbohydrates which are produced are not used at once. They are stored in the form of starch. These starch are the internal energy reserves of the plants which they can use in their later futures. So we can define photosynthesis, photosynthesis in a more precise way which is the process in which conversion of light energy is into the chemical energy by the green parts of the plants is called as photosynthesis. The green color is due to the chlorophyll pigment which is present in the plants. Now this chlorophyll plays an important role in the photosynthesis process. Now you must be thinking what is that chemical energy which we are talking of. We can understand this by the simple equation chemical reaction. Here you can see that here we have carbon dioxide which reacts with water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. The main product is this C6, H12 and O6. Now what is this? This is a form of carbohydrate which we call as glucose. Now we all know what glucose does. It is an energy provider. So this is the chemical energy we are talking of. Now we have seen what is photosynthesis and what is the chemical reaction which goes on. So let's see the steps involved in the photosynthesis process. The first step is absorption of sunlight by the chlorophyll. The second step involves two actions. The first is conversion of light energy into chemical energy and the second is splitting of water into hydrogen and oxygen. This hydrogen which is released is used in the third step. In the third step, the carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrates. Now this reduction is due to the hydrogen which is released in the step 2. So we get the carbohydrates. These carbohydrates are the main nutrients to the plants. Till now we have seen the different steps involved in the photosynthesis process. So let's have a look on the raw materials which are used by the plants and which helps in the photosynthesis process. There are four main raw materials which are used by the plants. They are mainly chlorophyll, carbon dioxide, sunlight and water. So when we talk of chlorophyll, it is responsible for the green color of the plants. Now it is it also plays an important role in trapping the sunlight which is essential for the photosynthesis process. These chlorophylls are filled in a cell-like structure which are called as chloroplasts. These chloroplasts are placed on the epidermis of the leaves and play an important role in the photosynthesis. Now when we talk of carbon dioxide, you must be thinking why plants need carbon dioxide. 
This carbon dioxide is not utilized by the plant during respiration process. The respiration process of the plants is as similar to humans. So, the carbon dioxide is used by the plants for the photosynthesis process and which results in the production of carbohydrates. But how do you think the plants acquire the carbon dioxide they need? Obviously, the carbon dioxide which is produced within them is not sufficient enough for the photosynthetic demand. The answer lies in the leaves of the green plants. These leaves on the surface have pores which allows the gaseous exchange and allows the carbon dioxide to enter into the plant. These pores are called as stomata. During the daytime, the stomata are open and carbon dioxide along with the gases enters into the plant. Now there is massive exchange of gases into the plant. So it is important that these pores are closed when they are not in use because a huge amount of water can be lost through these pores. Now this opening and closing is controlled by the guard cells. These guard cells work on the osmosis process. When the water flows into these cells, they swell up and allow the carbon dioxide to enter into these cells. But when they are not in need, the water flows out of the cell and they shrink. So in this way, the carbon dioxide is controlled in the plants. Now the third raw material is sunlight. And we all know about sunlight. It is the ultimate source of energy. The fourth is water. We have seen in the step two of the photosynthesis process that the hydrogen which was released there was used in step three for the reduction of carbon dioxide into carbohydrates. We had also seen there was release of electrons. Now what is the purpose of the electrons? These electrons provide the energy for the photosynthesis process. Now you can also see this equation where the water splits in the presence of sunlight to give hydrogen, oxygen and electrons. This breaking of water into its components in the presence of sunlight is called as photolysis. So we have seen the autotrophic nutrition, the photosynthesis process involved in it, the steps involved in the photosynthesis process and the raw materials which are used by the plants in the photosynthesis. So we will see the heterotrophic nutrition in the next video.